But yet the ten virgins, after the bridegroom come, the, the five foolish went back and got oil in their lamps, which signifies the Holy Ghost. But if you take and look at the destruction of Jerusalem with the story of the ten virgins, you'll find that the five virgins that had their lamps trimmed and burning, when Titus pulled the armies back after three and a half years of siege upon the city, these virgins were ready. They understood that now was the time to flee. And these five virgins that had their lamps trimmed and ready, they fled the destruction of Jerusalem and what was coming upon that city. They fled and they were saved. Their life was saved. But the five foolish virgins, those that knew the truth, they went and got the Holy Ghost in their lamps. But the door of opportunity to leave the city of Jerusalem had been shut. And they were destroyed with the city of Jerusalem. Did they get the Holy Ghost? Yes, they did. But what a terrible thing it was to know that they could have been safe on the outside had they only believed the words of Jesus. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contentment. Daniel goes on to say in verses 11 and 12, and from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away. Has the daily sacrifice been taken away? Yes, it has. Show me where they're making sacrifices today. When that temple was destroyed in 70 AD, there has never been another sacrifice offered in Jerusalem. And the abomination that maketh desolate set up, thou shalt be 2,290 days. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the 1,305 and 30 days. But go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. And what Daniel is prophesying is the coming end of the old covenant. I think it was about three, three and a half, about halfway through the siege that they quit making sacrifices in the temple. The last official high priest, Brother Moon, elaborate on it. You, Levi wasn't even actually in the priesthood, was he? He wasn't even in the priesthood. And you can read about Levi in the, jo in the book of Josephus. Ananias was the last official lineage of the high priesthood. And his, when he made his sacrifices about three and a half years before Jerusalem was destroyed. And Daniel saying how long it'll be from the time that last sacrifice is made till it's completely finished. And then he says, blessed is he that makes it to the beginning of the new covenant church when it's in full swing. From the time that Jesus died upon the cross until that temple was destroyed, I want you to know that the early church looked forward to something a little better than what they had still yet. We may look at the day of Pentecost and say, oh, that must have been wonderful. And I believe today that it was, it was wonderful. But yet there's no denying that the early church looked forward to stepping into something just a little bit greater even yet. And what they were waiting for and looking for was whenever that old covenant would completely come to an end or would completely be removed. I, I like to refer to it as being removed because it, if you begin to read about it, it was dead at Calvary. But the carcass was still there until the temple was destroyed in 70 A.D. 
there was still, they remembered that system. That's the reason why the early church, oftentimes you see them going to uh, the temple and, and making the sacrifices, putting forth the offerings the, and making the sacrifices that they still did. You, you can read through the New Testament if you've ever wondered why did the early church give honor to a system that was dead because there's many times in uh, one of the discussion forums that I'm one, some of the preachers are talking about that it's all right to make these sacrifices and what a dangerous thing. The only reason the early church did is because that system still existed. It wasn't any good, but it was still there. And the Bible says, heaven and earth may pass away, but my word will never pass away. And as long as heaven and earth was there, that old covenant system, it was still active. That Paul wrote, that we which are alive and remain. My Adam Clark commentary, I looked this verse up, and Adam Clark made the comment. He said that whenever the disciples said, and we which are alive and remain, that they really didn't mean we. Now, I don't know about you, but I have come to the place that I believe today that if they wrote something and didn't mean it what else did they write and didn't mean if they wrote something but really didn't mean it what else did they write and really didn't mean If they were inaccurate in one place, where else were they inaccurate? Again, we have to remind you that this letter was written to the church at Thessalonians. And they were told, we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. In other words, this judgment that has been talked about all the way through Thessalonians that was coming against the old covenant church in Jerusalem. When God come to bring judgment against this old covenant system, that even though the church be alive and remain at that time, it was not going to prevent those that had already died coming back with God to bring judgment against this old covenant system. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Those that are dead, they go on to be with the Lord first. Just Debbie, would you like to read verses 17 and 18? Brother Moon? And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. And tonight, if I you disagree with it, that's fine. We can disagree to be di disagree agreeably. There we go. Again, and we which are alive and remain in Again, Adam Clark said, well, he really didn't mean we, he meant they. In other words, for it to be put off into the future, you'd have to say, and they which are alive and remain. But this is not what the Apostle Paul said. He put it in present tense to those he was writing to 2,000 years ago, and we which are alive and remain. And I'm sorry I didn't write the Bible, so you can't, Get on to me for this little word change. 